Hi everyone, this is Matt Thomas from the Adobe Analytics product management team. I wanted to introduce you to graph-based stitching for CJA. This feature harnesses the identity-rich graph that is stored in AEP and used by several solutions, including RTCDP and AJO. To get things started, I'm assuming that you are familiar with the current offering of shield-based stitching. With that assumption, let's pick up where we left off on Corey's journey. This journey is very common. Corey recently had a baby and had some paternity leave. He has some home projects that need to be done, but realizes he needs a few tools, tools first. Since he holds the baby a lot, he can do some initial research from his phone. As he narrows the products down, he moves to his laptop to do some final comparisons. He purchases most of the tools online, but realizes he needs one right away and decides to head into the store. After purchasing, he gets home and unboxes it and realizes that a piece is missing. While he can use the tool and get the job done, he calls in to the support center and requests a replacement part be sent. After his interaction on the phone, he has sent a survey which he completed. When bringing this data into AEP, typically it's in a data set and it's centered around a single or primary identity and it most likely is not common with all of the other ones in the sandbox. Even with field-based stitching today, we can elevate a single data set with identities that are founded into a higher identity. This still may not be enough. As you can see here, this web and mobile data set were elevated to email, which allows us to connect it to the voice of customer data, but that's where it stops. When you go to make that connection, CJ, it is required that every row have a person ID and get the full benefit of CJ. It really needs to be in common across all the data sets. To make this possible, you start to share identities across data sets. As we know, authentication or the ability to know a person doesn't always happen just in a single channel. So by enabling identity services on a wide range of data sets, the graph starts to build the, these identities and the relationships they have into, this, into a graph as seen here in this visual. In our example, we take five data sets and ensure that all identities that are found in them are marked on the appropriate schema. Whether it's an email or an ECID or credit card, we need to mark them as identities on the schema. Once they are marked and the data set is enabled for identity services, then they start to contribute to the graph. As you can see here, each of those different identities start to flow into the graph. Now the stitching process comes into play so we can help to elevate these data sets to a preferred or gold identity. In this case, we are using email, and as you can see, the CRM voice of customer data sets are already aligned to email, so no stitching is needed. The web, call center, and point of sale data sets, however, do need some elevation. We take the predominant identity found in each of these, referred to as the persistent ID, and basically do a lookup against the graph. For instance, we have a credit card, the point of sale data set, we go and look up the, from the graph and retrieve an email. We take this email and plug it in as the stitched ID column. Let me walk you through an example. As you can see, we have a web data set and a very well built out graph. The graph may not start out this way, but over time it can resemble something like this. As the first value comes in, we look up that device ID against the graph and resolve to the preferred namespace in this case, which is CRM ID, and we plug Corey into there. We repeat this process for additional rows. On this third row, it becomes a little interesting because we have an email address on the row itself, but we again take the device ID we have and look it up against the graph, and we know that the CRM ID is the preferred identity, so we plug that in. So now we've added an identity to this data set that it didn't have any reference to before. We'd repeat this process through all of the different data set, all of the different rows in the data set. And as you can see, we've appropriately assigned multiple rows of data to the right person. Now, the last step is really making the connection to these data sets. You simply make a connection specifying the correct person ID, which in this case is stitched ID for the ones that we stitched and email for the other two. Now, all of the data sets are aligned together around the right identity and richer analysis can be performed. Hopefully you have a better understanding of graph-based stitching and how it can help you uh, in your customer journey analysis and activation. Thank you.